Hello, uh, I'm Sarang Hamas Saeed, Director of Middle East Programs at the U.S. Institute of Peace. As the coronavirus has been spreading around the world, we have been monitoring its effects, especially in fragile states and conflict zones where displaced populations and uh, refugees are in a particularly vulnerable situation. In this brief video, I'll talk about Iraq and how the uh, coronavirus affected Iraq's political situation, the state of conflict and peace there, and tensions between the United States and Iran. So first question is how uh, the pandemic affected uh, the political situation in Iraq. So the, it has greatly affected uh, the situation, the political situation, by pushing the demonstrators um, off the street, those who have been uh, uh, in, in Baghdad and south of Iraq, demanding reform and better jobs and services and, uh, um, and, and improvement in their overall uh, conditions in Iraq. Um, and that relieved the pressure on the political class. Um, but the political class, uh, and to respond to uh, JP's questions on the Constitution, they've tried to remain in the constitutional process. So the Iraq now has a third uh, attempt at uh, forming a government. Uh, uh, on April 9, President of Iraq, Barham Saleh, uh, tasked Mr. Mustafa al-Kazimi to form a uh, government, and he has 30 days uh, to do that. Um, should he be successful, his first task would be to respond to the immediate need of the COVID-19 uh, crisis and also respond to the, the, the demands of the demonstrators, deal with the U.S.-Iran tensions, the continued threat of ISIS and many more complex uh, issues. And so to the second question to ask um, uh, basically ourselves is that how has the conflict affected uh, the state of peace and security in Iraq. And there is a positive and the negative in how we answer this question. Uh, in a sense of a positive, um, and also to respond to uh, uh, Sirwan's question uh, about the KRG Baghdad uh, dynamics, is that uh, there, it brought a common purpose that's uh, not exactly like ISIS, but in a similar way, this is a common enemy. It gave people a common purpose. And uh, there are uh, ways where uh, uh, there is collaboration, uh, whether um, in terms of uh, medical and security and uh, procedural coordination between the KRG and the government in Baghdad, or the people uh, helping each other out. Uh, yeah, so that has been good. However, uh, on the other side, the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis is coming at an environment where there was a deficit of trust between the people and the state and the political class. And uh, so that's why, uh, as in many societies where the pandemic was not taken seriously, the Iraqi people did not necessarily trust that their political leaders would be able to respond to this con uh, pandemic uh, uh, closely, or they did not heed the advice and the instructions uh, for people to go home and uh, exercise social distancing. So the government had to uh, uh, put in stricter measures of curfews and bring in the police and other security resources uh, to enforce that. Uh, but moving forward, this will be a continued challenge uh, for Iraq because uh, the, now they have the uh, additional complication, the drop in oil prices, so Iraq has less resources to deal with uh, ongoing issues, and now COVID-19 has just been added. So as the, this challenge continues, social pressure on the government will continue just for economic reasons, uh, uh, let alone the continued need of reconstruction in areas liberated from ISIS, and if the government uh, becomes unavailable, uh, uh, un uh, unable to uh, pay public servants, that will just complicate the situation even more. Uh, on the question of U.S.-Iran uh, tensions uh, in Iraq, um, the coronavirus has basically uh, resulted in both countries being more uh, inwardly focused uh, to deal with their own pandemic situation. Um, uh, however, that did not stop both of them from signaling uh, publicly and privately uh, that they continue to pursue their interests and objectives in Iraq. For the U.S., they want uh, to limit Iranian influence and limit the, the role of the popular mobilization forces uh, and a variety of other uh, uh, issues. On the Iranian side, they want the U.S. troops out, uh, limit U.S. role, and, um, and, and strengthen the role of the uh, popular mobilization forces and others. Uh, so these tensions will continue. The U.S. has consolidated its troops uh, in a smaller number of bases, 
uh, in due to changing circumstances, out of protection for uh, due to the coronavirus, and also uh, an adjustment uh, of the mission uh, as uh, things go forward. A uh, strategic dialogue between Iraq and the United States has been set for um, uh, June of this year. So that will be a great opportunity for the country, to two countries to work their, uh, through uh, their issues uh, through dialogue. Uh, on the role of the international community, uh, it is really important uh, for that to continue. Uh, before COVID-19, Iraq needed a lot of help from the international community in, uh, for the political reform, for dealing with its governance issues uh, and rebuilding in areas after ISIS. Uh, that need has been compounded and the role of the international community through uh, technical expertise in the, uh, to respond to the pandemic, but also in the political space to address uh, the grievances of the people will remain to be uh, important. In the end, I would like to thank you for your great questions and engagement uh, with uh, this video on social media. Please continue the discussion through the uh, COVID and conflict hashtag and check out the USIP website, usip.org, for more resources on Iraq and the uh, pandemic and other conflict zones.